Hey, what's going on everyone? This is our reviews back with another video and today we're talking about iOS 17.5. Now this is probably the last big update to iOS 17 before we move on to the new iOS 18 beta one. Now in today's video, I will show you guys everything that you need to know regarding this update before you go ahead and move on and update your device to iOS 17.5, which is just around the corner, but we're gonna talk about the release date of this software in a few minutes now. Now, first of all, the last beta of iOS 17.5 came in at around 500 megabytes and the build number for this update is 21F5073B. That last number right there B indicating that this is most likely the last beta of this update, even though we expected to see an RC version this week, but it didn't happen. But we're gonna talk about that in a minute here as well. Now, first of all, let's talk about updating. As we know, updating to iOS to a new iOS release is very simple. But if you're currently on one of the betas of iOS 17.5 and you want to just update directly to the public release, now is the time for you to turn off the beta updates. So go to general right here, software update, and make sure you have turned off the beta updates from here. Because if you leave them on and you get the RC version and you update to the RC version, then you won't be able to update to the public version of iOS 17.5, even though those are the exact same updates, but some people just want to update to the public release. So if you wanna do that, go ahead and first of all, turn off right here the beta updates. Let's take a look at some really important things regarding iOS 17.5. That is of course, battery life and performance. Now, first of all, let's talk about the battery. Taking a look here at the last 10 days, how it did perform, on battery, I have to say that beta three was actually quite bad. You can see all these times right here, this is all on beta three. Expect this day right here had a better performance. The other days we had, you can see right there, 75% battery usage, five hours, which is actually bad. And this one very similar as well. And this one as well, you, can, you have to keep in mind that this is at 100% maximum battery right there. But the last couple of days with the last beta, it actually has been a bit better. You can see right there with around 55% battery, we got six and a half hours. And then right here with about 70% 70, 70 battery, we got again about six and a half hours, which is not that bad. And today with about 30% battery, 33 hours and 35 minutes, which is again, not the best ever, but a bit of improvement based on beta three, which was actually the worst beta of iOS 17.5 when it came to battery. And now let's move on, talk about performance. Here we have the Geekbench score for iOS 17.5 beta four. Now you will notice here, we have a bit of decrease here on the score when it comes to a comparison with iOS 17.4, but this is the final release of iOS 17.4. So we can expect this score to actually improve with the next releases. And of course, as soon as this update will just stay on the device for a few days, we will probably get a way better performance. But here we have the scores, the multi-core score at 7,338 on 17.5, 17.4 here, it was a bit higher, 7,432, while the single core score is almost identical here, 2,955, and right here we had 2,968, not a big difference right there, but still it underperforms when comparing to iOS 17.4, even though on daily basis it actually is quite smooth and it runs quite well on the device. And now let's talk about the new features and changes, the most important ones that you will get with 17.5. Now, probably one of the most important ones is this one right here, repair state, which will be added to the Find My App. Now, this has been found on the code of 17.5 beta 4. Basically, this is a mode in which you can put your device 
through the Find My app when you take it to Apple for repair. You no longer need to turn off Find My and remove that from your device. You just put it on this repair state and the device will function as normally and you can send it to Apple for a repair, which is actually very, very useful. Now, another one right here, you can notice the podcast widget. Now it's actually dynamic there. It will take the color of the album art of the podcast you're listening to. There are a lot of changes on the news app as well. First of all, if you go under puzzle here, you will see that we now have a new game called Quartiles that Apple has actually added to iOS 17.5, this one right here. And also the news app is now integrated with Game Center. Now, if you go to your settings and you go under news here, you will find a lot of new settings. First of all, you can enable or disable Game Center. Now notice that this will work only with News Plus, and then you will also have here download options for the offline mode, of course. You have here the ability to enable or disable automatic downloads, but if you go here, then you will have a lot more options. You will have the recent stories, the saved stories, the magazine, the puzzles, and the audio stories. You can just go ahead and enable or disable any of these individually. And what you also get here is optimized storage. Now this one is really useful as it will download smaller versions of images so that it will save a ton of space on your device. And there are a few changes on the books app as well. Right there you will notice at your profile picture there will be a counter for your daily goal which I think is very useful. And then when you go to your library and you have your finished books, when you want to edit the finished date you will see a totally new date picker here for the finished date for your books. There are a few changes on the settings app as well. First of all, if we go under screen time right here, you can see under communication limits right here, it says now set limits for calling and messages, and it used to say set limits based on contacts. Also under content and privacy restriction right here, it's now manage content apps and settings, and it used to be block inappropriate content right here. Also, if we go back and go under privacy and security, you will notice right here we have passkey access for web browsers. Now it has an icon. Now this used to be here before, but didn't have an icon, now it does. Another change that you will notice on iOS 17.5, but this will unfortunately for now be only for EU users, is that now you can download apps from websites. So devs can place their apps on their websites and you will be able to actually download those directly from their website. And now let's talk about the release dates. So we're currently on beta 4, which is most likely the last beta. Now, what I would expect Apple to do is release the RC version on the 7th of May. That's the date where Apple has the new event, but they will most likely present the new iPads and Apple Pencil 3, which of course has actually been spotted on the code of iOS 17.5. So that day we can expect the RC version of iOS 17.5. And then we have to wait and see when Apple will set the new iPads for release. If they will be released on the 17th right here, most likely iOS 17.5 will be released on the 13th or 14th of May. If they decide to ship the iPads on the 10th, then you can expect actually iOS 17.5 to be released somewhere here towards the end of the next week, but most likely it will happen on the 13th or 14th of May. And last but not least, should you update to iOS 17.5? Well, iOS 17.5 has some really cool new features. Again, we talked about the podcast, the ability to set the repair mode for your device, the new features on the news app, but most of them will be for News Plus. If you use News Plus, then you will have those features. But again, when we take a look at the battery life, it's not the best ever. It's okay comparing to iOS 17.4. It was, it will be probably the same thing. Performance on the other side is quite good and Apple has actually fixed quite a few bucks with 17.5. So for the general public, I would wait like a couple of days 
two or three days after the public release of iOS 17.5 just to see if there will be any major issues with this update of course before deciding to now update to iOS 17.5. So that's basically it for this video, guys. This is everything you need to know regarding 17.5 before you go ahead and update your device. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Leave a like if you did. Also, don't forget to subscribe for more, and I'll see you on the next one.